wait for my computer can, to connect so I know I'm live. But if you are on, hello. <laughs> Cam's just sorting me out because I'm not a techie. Right, here we are. Hi everyone. Right, I'm on a little bit early, a couple of minutes, that's so. all. Um, so I'd just like to say we I'm gonna do a nice sample using some of these cards, some of these stamps. Um, namely the horse one, but I've done a sample with the pig one at the moment. Okay, but I'm going to use the horse one today. So, if you're on, please say hello. Type in a hello in the comments, and then I can see who's watching with me today. And if you're not watching today, and you're watching this on later on, as, as recorded, then... You could say hello, but I'm not going to respond back because obviously it won't be live. <laughs> so, is anybody there? Anybody there? Anybody? Right, there's a couple of people on I can see. So, yeah, so if I hold this card up a little bit, it's four o'clock now, so I'll hold up the card, show you a little bit more of it. So I've got this little picky on foam pads, I'm not going to market, this little picky's going to the market. Um, hey Gav, you alright? Can you hear me alright? Yeah, can you hear me? Right. Okie doke, well, it doesn't look like anybody is joining us, so we're going to record this as a live so that it can go onto YouTube. But if you do join in, then I'll say hi to you when you type in later. So, first of all, there's the one I've done before. So, we've got a little piggy, two little mice, one with rain, put some rain in the sky. I'm going to show you how to do this background. And I'm going to show you how to do this wall as well. All right, or wall similar anyway. Okay, so let's get on with making the card. Okay, and then you can come and see me. So I'll show you all the stamps first. I'll leave our card there while I show you the stamps. So the one I've used here is the Pig in Good Time. So that's the Pig in Good Time. It's got four little pigs, three mice and not all sorts of other little bits. It's even got the wall that I actually used on this card and I'll show you that later as well. Okay, so that's that one. Stamps are quite good as well. Then we've got excellent news. So it's got cockerels and stuff like that. Excellent news, fierce chick and things like that. And these are designer the boutique. Okay, so if you can share this live to your friends as well, if you're on. We've also got a lovely Just For You, which has got some sheep and a sheepdog, a little lamb there, and some flowers. Who do have a new job? I love you and Just For You. So the nice stamps. Then the one I'm going to be using today is going to be the Good Luck. So obviously Good Luck is the horseshoes. So I'm not going to do the horses today. Okay. Then we've got bottoms up. Hop, you have a riveting birthday. Congratulations on new Western member. Bottoms up. I'm Quackers about you. And then we've got all of these. And then the last one that's in the range is utterly irresistible. So it says, I find you utterly irresistible. <gasps> Hi, Carolyn. Heard about your news. I'm utterly amusing. So you've got a cow and a calf there. Okay, and some barley and all sorts of things. So that was the card I 
to me. I can hear you, but it's not very loud on my phone. I'm looking forward to this. Oh, good. There we are, Donna. So Donna's looking forward to this video. So this is the piggy one, which the sample will be in the shop tomorrow as well. So you can always come and have a little look at that. And the horse one will be there as well. So the one I'm going to do today, I'm going to be using the horses. And it has got um, some brickwork here as well. So I'm going to show you how to make a wall with that as well. Okay. So I'm going to put all these other stamps away for now. Okay. Um, got my horse stamps and the first thing I need to do is prepare my card. So this is um, A4 300 gram super smooth, which we do in small and large packs. And I'm just going to pop it landscape on a scoreboard all the way to the left and score it at 15 centimetres. Now, if you're wary of it cracking, just go it on the opposite side and then it wouldn't matter whether you fold it that way or the other way. Okay, just fold down half and reinforce that fold. So there's my card base. So this is an A5 card. Hi Sue! We see me all the time soon. You see me tomorrow in class as well. So this is my card base, which is A5. So I'm going to pop that to the side. Put that with the stamps. I've then already prepared just a little bit. I've taken an A4 piece of 200 grams super smooth. I've stamped a horse. I, first of all, I cut a piece that's 12 centimetres. And then out of the waist, I've actually stamped a horse and pre sort of cut that ready for me. So you didn't have to watch me cutting it all out. So I hope that's okay with you. And then um, what I did then, I actually cut the piece that I had there to 10 centimeters. And I put the 10 centimeters to the top out of the way and I've started to stamp my image on there. Now I just want to get that done so that I can show you the wall and how I'm going to make this into more of a, of a, a horse building. Okay, like a stable or whatever. Okay. So. I always forget something. Right, so there's my craft mat using the back of it so you can't see any lines on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a fine line pen, okay, and across the top of this I'm just going to do two lines. Now I don't want it to be completely straight because it's all quirky and sort of cartoony so I want to keep that like that. And then I'm just going to come down just off the edge, I'm not making it straight, I'm not making it straight at all. Okay, so I'm just doing that, just do that, and that's all I'm going to do. Just going to do some lines like that. So this is actually putting it, so this is the roof, and then just putting some more slats. Some more wooden beams there. Okay. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five. So never be afraid to extend your stamps. Okay, so now we've got this horse and I was in an actual building. Okay, so I'll just put it up a little bit closer. Okay, so you can see that's there now, and that was just a fine line pen. That was the O5, where I could have used a finer one, but it matches in lovely there. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in. So, the reason I stamped this is because I'm going to put him on foam pad so he's coming in to say hello to the other horse after. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the stamp. I know, so I can't stay away either. So 
So she says she can't stay away from the shop. <laughs> oh, look at that. Nice cup of tea. I've got a nice person bringing me a nice cup of tea. Thank mm. you, Gavin. <laughs> that wasn't my arm either, it was Gavin's. Thank you, Gavin. Right, so on the horse stamp as well, I'm just going to show you, there's two little bricks. They're actually touching, but there's two little bricks there. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a full wall with that now. Okay, because I think it deserves an outing. Just to show you how to do a wall out of two little bricks. And I mean like a farmer's wall, so it's got the top bits as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my wall go probably about that height. Okay, so I've just made a line. And then I'm going to take my VersaFine Clay ink pad. I've got the two bricks ink on my fingers already. Look, I've got my two bricks on my stamp, on my block. So you can see those two bricks there. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to do is the bricks that go across the top. Now they usually lean at an angle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that in. So that's my, the top of my wall. And if you want to put another brick here so it looks exactly the same, just bring a little bit of scrap over the top of your horse, ink up your stamp, and just bring in that last brick there, look. Okay? Just finishes it off a little bit more. Yeah, lovely cupper as well. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the two bricks again. Gonna scatter them around a bit. Not being too fussy about this, I'm gonna turn the stamps around. Oh, both. Ah, you can put them around here the same way. Okay, okay, no problem. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go in and build a bit more. Okay. Just extend the wall and the bricks. Go across on that one. And again, I want to come over the edge of the horse box there. So just put that on the edge so you can see a black line. And then we're going to go into there like that. Okay, and then we're going to come off the edge there. Right. So now I've done that, I clean my stamp. Now I've got a bit of water on this cloth. It's a very dirty cloth because I've been using it today for my acrylic paints as well. So that is the brickwork. Yeah, so there is a link on the bottom. I keep forgetting to tell people that. Um, and that, so what I'm doing, I'm just putting a few grassy bits coming up. Or that you'll see most of them because. Okay, that's the grass bit. And then in between these, I'm just going to do a couple of extra different types of bricks. So I'm just taking the same fine line pen so you know that. Farmers walls are usually a bit higgly piggly because they've used different size bricks. So this is all I'm doing. It's just going in there. I'm making up a bit more of a wall. Okay. So that is my wall. So you're not going to see too much of that because that's going to be in front of it. But he's going to say a lot. Okay. 
and I think what we'll do is well after those stamps I think what we'll do we'll put Mr. We'll put a little wheelbarrow down the bottom bottom here okay so it's all about build with these stamps is about building a composition so building an image and a scene out of everything and then there's a little mouse in here that actually pushes the wheelbarrow so i'm just going to grab him i'll just show you that there so there's this little mouse there with the wheelbarrow okay so i'm just going to ink him up and we can put his hand on the wheelbarrow there we are so he's now pushing the wheelbarrow That's it. Some look if there was any flowers and stuff. Let's put in a wheelbarrow, but it's not, so that's fine. Yeah, they are cute little mouses. Or mice. The mice they call lots of mice. So now that is my composition sort of made. Okay. So I've sort of made up my sort of scene then basically the one thing i am going to do is i'm going to cut this little bit off okay now i'm going to use this don't have to be too precise Go back and forth and I hope everybody's okay today the weather's been atrocious off and on all day today but I've been stuck in this craft room doing lots of painting ready for my class tomorrow Okay, so now I've got rid of a lot of that. Okay. So I hope everybody's okay. Now, what I need to do is to colour these. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually show you the sky. Okay, so this nice vibrant sky here okay which will actually go behind that and i can make it as long as short as i want okay so if you're not sure how long you want it just do it so you've got your length and i just bring it down a little bit and just make a little mark with my pens so i know what area of that piece i'm going to be doing okay so the pens i'm using to do that to do this i'll bring that into shot so you can see that so the pens i'm going to use to do this is actually the nouveau pens so you can use tri blends and you can use any of the alcohol pens um, and because of course it's a character again you don't have to be so particular about the way so with the New rows I'm using four seven five four oh one fruit punch which is three nine two and then I'm using the strawberry jam it's the last one which is three seven nine Okay, so I'm going to start with the apricot blush, which is 475. So you just find in the colours you can use. You can use the chisel chip as well. 
And that's all I'm going to do with this one. So I'm going to make this guy. Now I'm not worried about the amount of swirls or gaps I'm having because this is just the first amount. And I will put a piece of paper under that because then that will stop it. Not that it matters so much on this piece because I'm colouring it all. What I'm doing, I'm just getting the colour down using the chisel tip. Oh yeah, I'm doing the 3D um, nativity scene in the class. Gavin's asking what class is tomorrow. Doing a 3D nativity scene. Um, and I'm sure enough to paint that even with the intricate sort of details and stuff like that. So I've done the lighter colour. Then I'm going to do the second colour, which is 401 which is more of a yellow. Just go into go over the whole colour all the way up. And I've done something like this with pencils in my colouring class on mon last Monday. So well, this Monday I should say. So that's you can do that as well. That was my yellow, go all the way up. And I'm going to go with my fruit punch, which was 392. Again, chisel tip again. Now I know you're thinking, wow, that's really bright. That doesn't look that, that bad over there. So what you do once you've done that, you come back with your, your lemon and you go over the edge. Just go quickly over the top of it. Right. Can come in with another yellow as well if you want to. Yeah. We'll come into that one as well. And use another colour as well. Okay. Back to the lemon. and then the red. This is the thing when you use these colours you have to go from where you're starting all the way up because then that will blend the colours that you put in later. Has anybody got any questions about this or want to know what the, the colour of the pens are again? If you have just so as you can see now the red is going right along the top and I come down the colours again. So basically we're making a bit, I suppose, like a rainbow effect. Anybody got any questions about anything at all? And then just a the pale one, then just to finish off. Down there. going up with the pale one again it lightens everything again from up top and I'm quite happy with that okay it's almost similar to that so that's that so I can pop that to the side now to allow that to dry and now they're very quiet today 
they've gone four gone to sleep because it's dark out there that's what it is <laughs> okay so i'm going to bring in the horses and the, and this now now i am going to bring in a piece of scrap paper and i'm going to check out my browns so i'm going to use some of these because i haven't got all these Removal pens, so I'm going to try some of these. Presumably, you could do this with pencils as well. Yeah, you could do it with pencils, but what I would do, Sue, is actually use not the super smooth, I would actually use the pick and mix white because that would blend better with everything. So, that would be the choices with that. So, I'm just trying to figure out the browns now I'm going to use for the wood. Yeah, so everything we did in the colouring class on Monday, you could do with this in the sky. That's no problem, so no problem at all. Yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to use the darker one here, which is EB1, EB2 and EB3 from these. Let's start with the light. I'm cropping down these, um, again, I'm not being too precise with these at the moment. Then I'm going to go in with a dark. The dark from the bottom, from the left hand edge. And then I'm going to go into the middle colour. Go along the edge, leaving a little bit of a lighter colour there. And then back with the light again, just to go back in and finish off down the middle edges. The secret is with alcohol pens is especially if it's something like a character like this sort of thing character stamps is not to be too precise really it's just enjoy it be quite rough with it so you can see now that's got a little bit of shadow in it now so they look like different slats of the wood okay so that's what we're going to do so light color not worried about getting that I'm going to go all the way across the top here. Dark. So not, notice how I'm doing sort of smaller areas and not doing the whole thing. That's because if the alcohol dries, I do the whole thing then some of the alcohol can dry which means I won't get the blend then that I'm looking for so it needs to stay wet and plus the alcohol pens will evaporate quicker we need to be a bit more quicker at doing it really so that's why I only do little bits at a time And as it dries, it gets better as well. Always looks a lot darker when it's wet. When the alcohol evaporates, then it looks a lot paler. Like I said, I'm not too worried about speed. Bend it down, not being too precise. Cam says that looks really realistic. Yeah, well, it's about just getting your colours down, knowing how to blend. Once you know how to blend, then 
you have a way to go and bring this technique into everything you do with the alcohol pens. For those who are booked in for the class tomorrow, it's um, a 10 till 2 class tomorrow, so it's an extra hour. Because, in, I mean, we might finish it before then, but there's a lot of detail work. I was going to message you earlier and say that you could use alcohol pens, but if you're putting it in the sunlight in the window, then um, they can actually fade a little bit in the sun so that's why I'm using acrylic paints on mine there's nothing to say that you can use alcohol pens on your MDF scene tomorrow as well So that's the that's the building. Um, I'm going to use a grey, a couple of greys for this bit along the top. Because then that will be like the felt on the flat roof. And again, just going to take two greys. Go rough. I do find these new pens do blend quite well. Probably one of the cheapest pens on the market as well for a good pen, for a really good pen actually. Um, well, not cheap. Good value for money, that's what we should say. stands out from the rest of the door. And now I'm going to do the grey as the silver for doors. And I'm going to do a grey as if it's got a panel on there. This looks like it's got all sorts of locks and stuff on there. Get some shading down the sides, around the corners. Want to look a bit sort of lighter in the middle of the hole. There we are. And that. Okay. So then on the inside, I mean, we can say that that's been painted inside. So let's go for a nice, just gonna go for a nice fresh color inside there. Just gonna color that. Also a little bit of color behind there. There we are. Okay. And also, this is one of the green so this is pillow mint this is what I use for the grass on this one as the main base color so I'm just going with a chisel tip this covers really quickly of course it's a light color it's got more alcohol in it which means it blends a lot easier
I'm not being too precise in the other mouses at the moment. And uh, go on there. Almost matches the colour of this card to the piece of paper I put underneath it. I go over that twice. And that'll be enough for that. And I can go in with a slightly brighter green, which is Persian Lime, which is 410. Which pens are you using with the Spectrum Noir? Yeah, yeah they're, they're tri blend pens. So the tri blend pens um, has three colours in it. So it's got the light, the medium, and the dark. Um, with the tri blend pens, it's sort of a starter pen, but they are still, you know. You're talking three, three fifty for a pen, I think. Um, and literally, because there's three pens, when you think that's got to go in there, the barrel for that it's only small. So, and then when you take that off, you know you that barrel has got two pens in it. But they are pen colours that will blend with each other. So you've got a light, medium and dark in the same colourway. So that's what they are. But they don't last too long because there's only a small barrel for each colour. So it's more of a starter sort of thing. Okay. So that's what I tried then pen that. Right, so that's that. So I was going to go in the Persian line. So with the Persian line, I'm literally just adding in highlights now. So using the chisel tip and just flicking up. So I'm adding texture into the grass now. I go in different directions. I'm just going back and forth. So like I said, this is a more of a character funny sort of image. So it can be a bit more rough and a bit more. They do last a long time. Um, I mean, these pens will last a lot longer because they've got a mass, a bigger, like double the size barrel inside. And these come in sets of three, I think. Or five, I can't remember. Eventually, once we got rid of all the other pens, we will start getting these in individuals, I think. I think if they do it. So that's all I'm doing is just getting in there, just buffing it up a bit. Adding some texture into the grass. And then all right, are you on about these? I think Joe was asking about it's the others I was asking. All right, these are nouveau pens, Joe. Uh, the tonic, tonic pens, and they are the pens now that we have started to get in now. So, yeah, and they are they do work out a lot cheaper per pen when you're buying these. I'm going in with a slightly darker green now. I'm adding in sort of specks of green. And wherever the horse, wherever I'm going to put the horse, I can sort of see where I'm going to put his. So he's going to be about there and there. So. Okay. So that's going to be sort of there, and that's going to be sort of there. Okay. So to lighten down some of this green, if I think it's a bit too dark, I just go back with this medium colour pen I used earlier. Just go over the darker green I've just done with. That'll just pale it down just a fraction. Okay. Yeah, so these are new pens, Joe. We can't get a bigger 
set, but I think we've got the sets of three in at the moment. I think they're sets of three. I'm sure, Gavin and Lovelock, they are in the, on the system as well. Right, so when I come to doing the, the grey for the wall, I'm taking three greys. Now one of them is more of a brown grey, so the soft taupe, 495. So that's got a slight sort of browny tinge to it, and then I've got light and dark in these. So on the top bricks, I'm going to go light colour first. Then I'm going to go sort of halfway, now I'll go all, all the way. So get that light colour down. And you'll see how this all starts to build up then. So the bottom half of the brick each brick because that's where the shadows would be I'm just gonna go along the bottom bit there as well so that's the mortar that it's actually laid off to and then back to the paper one again so I'm a believer of using the pale colour first always and then going in with so your dark colour and then your light colour again. And then I'm going to do then, I'm just going to go two random bricks around here now. Okay, that's that. And again, don't forget if you're going in with that one, then just put a bit of shadow in on that one. Then go back with a light one. It's the first time that's happened to me on this one. So what's everybody doing tonight? Are they all just are you all just chilling? All just chilling, keeping up to this bad weather. And then I'm gonna go in just with a dark one and some of these as well. Just to give Different colour brickwork. And then I'm going to go in with this one that's got a hint of sort of a brown in it. that one and then in the background of the wall here I've just taken the pale grey just covered that as well so I'm just going in between in between all the brickworks because they're small areas you don't have to worry just get in fill them in so for those who are a bit wary of colouring these are perfect stamps really because they're such small images so there we are so I've now got my wall
Okay. Right. So now I have my ball and my sky, which goes well together. Okay, so that goes well together, and I'm actually going to raise that as well. So it'll give it a bit more dimension. And then the horses, I think we'll go, I think we'll go a nice, should we do a grey horse? Yeah, we'll do a grey horse. So the horse that's inside, I'm going to use grey. Okay, so I'm going to just use the dark grey. So this is another way of colouring with the alcohol pens. Um, I want to get shadow into this, but I'm just going to use the one pen. And I will show you this as, when I'm going as well. So I'm going to colour the horse as it is. Okay, so that looks quite flat. So you can see that's quite flat at the moment. I'll show you. I want to get closer just so you can see it. Okay, so that's quite flat. And then what I'm going to do, whenever I want the shadows, I'm going to start going back in with the same pen and just go in a few times. So the more times you go in, the darker this colour gets. Okay, but again, you don't want to wait time. You just want to keep doing it because what you'll end up with then is a horse that's got shading. So you can see now he's got shading. Okay. Now you can see that's quite a strong line from the jawline up to his eye. So what you do, what I do is waft out a little bit, I shake it, and that allows the alcohol to dry just a little bit. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the same colour, and I'm going to go over all that area. Now what that'll do, it'll tone down that strong line, but the shading is still there. And when it dries down, the lighter bits will be a little bit lighter and the darker bits will just tone down a little bit more. So that's how I do that. Okay. And then I think we'll use here's the brownie sort of to do his mane. And I'm gonna give this horse some little blue eyes. Why not? So green blue eyes. Just gonna put a little dot of colour inside there. Mouse is also gonna be grey. So again, same as what I did with the with the horse. Just gonna go in, colour in. And then go in again then where I want it to be darker. The smaller the image, the less you have to go back in too many times. Okay, so that's the mouse done. And so I'm gonna give him a I'm gonna give him a blue wheel of arrow. There is, I love to colour, but I need to practice more so I can learn about shading and lighting. More importantly, colours. Yep. You know, Donna and Crafting Wednesday. And that could always be one of your things once you finish your trees. Donna's doing quilling trees in 
in the crafting group. So just going to do a bit of blue on the wheelbarrow. Colours wheel blue. Then I'm going to use black for the laptop, the, the tire itself. blue handle which the mouse is holding on to and then I'm going to use a grey then I'm going to use a pale grey just to colour the so that's the wheelbarrow okay so that's that and then we've just got our other little horsey so our other little horsey I'm going to do colours like it is on yours. So if you're unsure about colouring, sometimes these stamps gives you a sort of inkling of how to colour. Okay, now I'm going to go with the opposite colour to what I used for the wood. For the wood on the horse. Boom. And I'm going to go with the other colour I've got, which will give me sort of goldy sort of browns instead of the brown browns. Yeah, they're very nice, Jill. You can build, you can sort of build your scenes with them, really. It's, and that's, that's what I like about them. They're small, you can make the smallest card you, that you want. You can make the largest card that you want, or you can just keep it as simple. You can have them peeking out of sort of die cut circles and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's quite good. So I'm going to concentrate on the horse's head at the moment. Going in with my light, going to go in with my dark colour, the chin, around the nose, through the centre. Okay, it's going to take a bit of dark in my medium. I'm just blending out the edge of the dark now with the medium. Still leaving light sources, light areas from everything. And then I go back in my light one again. And these pens do seem to have a lot of alcohol in them so they do do tend to blend really well. If I show you the head of the horse, you can see then how shadowed and how intricate he looks. It's got a lovely little dark and lights in it. Okay. And then let's go for the body. So I'm going to do the odd legs first because the underneath straight in with the light so again if you've got a dark area and you just want to do lots of dark and then go back in with the light just to lighten it just you can do that as well um, I'm going to do this back end of the horse Shadows down the back end here. And then I'm also going to put a little bit there as well. Give them a bit of shaping. Go with a medium pen. Bring it out so it blends out a little bit. And I just go small circle motions over the edge of what I've just done with the dark one. And then go back in with the light one again. So, the, so I'll explain again the reason we do light colour first again. So the light colour puts some alcohol into the card. Okay. Then we go into the dark one, which adds our shading. 
and because there's alcohol already in the card it allows that shading to go a lot better okay and then we use medium one to soften the edge of the dark pen and then we go back in with the light after that Right. Can we make a little line under that mane and go down the one side leg medium one and the light one again so you can see colouring can be quite quick it's about not being too fussy because if you try to be too fussy, fussy sometimes you can just you get too many marks and then you you get disheartened by what you by your outcome. So I'd rather just go a bit quicker. Get in there. There's a time and a place for being quick, and there's a time and a place for being really slow with it. And let's give that horse a bit of blue eyes as well. Uh, what colour mane? I don't know, I'm going to give him a black mane, I think. No, I'll give him a dark brown mane. There we are, give him a dark brown. Just some flicks. On the tail. Okay, so that is now the horse coloured. You can see all the shadows there. It's more 3D now. And then I'm going to use my tweezer scissors. I'm just cutting around. Doesn't matter if I leave a little bit of white on there. I'm not being too fussy. And it doesn't matter what size scissors you use to cut your thing as well. If you prefer to use a big scissors, then use a big scissors. Or tiny, tiny, tiny scissors. It doesn't matter what you use. If you wanted to use a craft knife, you can use a craft knife as well. We all got our favourites, so that makes no difference. And normally I use a huge scissors. I invested in one of these because I like the fact that they get locked as well so you close it cuts right to the point glad you like the horse glad you like all the colouring so now this is all about bringing it all together to, to, to make our image okay so we have our sky, we have our image, we have our horse, okay, so I'm going to pop them there. And if anybody does want a case of pens or want to start building the case of pens of ton of these, just let us know, we can order them, okay, we can order them. And it comes in a nice little carry case. I'm not sure how many cases there are, but there's not too many. And they are cheaper than all the other pens out there. And they are very good. So you could see that by the way I was colouring today. Okay, so there's my old card. So we're going to put this together. Okay, so I've got my card base. 
which is A4 folded in half. I'm then going to take a piece of the brown card. That is actually 14 centimeters already. So it's 14 centimeters wide by 20 centimeters long. Yeah, see the pens have worked out at one pound fifty each and there's three sets of these of these pots which holds how many pens are twenty-four. So yeah, twenty-four, forty-eight, sixty, seventy-two pens altogether. And that's it. No more, just seventy-two pens with them. So now I've got my brown piece which will fit onto you and it's just the card is 15 by 21 and I've cut the brown to 14 by 20 so it just gives you half half a centimeter all the way around and take my old paper skull out could have used my PVA on this one because I could have used my PVA because the card is thick enough so it wouldn't show no lines. But I like the wiggle room as well and this is great because I can still lift up, take it off and then put it back down and remove it and stuff until the alcohol evaporates from the glue. Right, what I'm then going to do is bring this in but I want to make it just a little bit smaller, okay? Make it a little bit smaller. So at the moment it is 12 centimeters and I want to bring it into 11. So that's 11 centimeters. And I also want to cut the horse and that to 11 as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn that upside down. Bring it to 11 and cut that as well. The reason I left them at 12 centimeters because I was going with a pen, I wanted to trim the one end off. Okay, so now I've got that. So, first things first, take my sky part. I'm going to place that so it's got a nice brown border around the three sides left right and the top it's lovely so that's there so you can see now it's starting to take shape and then I'm going to bring in some foam pads okay now these are big square foam pads so I'm just going to cut them in half Place these on. And I want to make sure this isn't going to bow, so I'm just going to put a couple in the middle as well. I've just removed all of them. Now if I want to make sure that I can lift and move these around, I can even take my, my old papers call out and go over my foam pads, which means I can be able to lift it if it doesn't quite go down where I want to. And I'm going to line this up, leave a little gap at the bottom, bring in my sky lining that up. There's that. So that's my image on. 
I've also got my little horse to go on as well. So again, foam pads. And make sure these foam pads can go on in places. They won't be seen. Got some thin ones to put on the legs. Cut that one in half. Oh. Just need to put one on the end of his hoof there, or he might be a bit wobbly. Put that one on the end of his tail. Oh my god, this one can go on the other hoof. There. Okay. And then it's a really good price for pens. I think there's a few companies out there that pens that are quite expensive. And if you can get the same job done with these ones as you can with any of the others. So what was the small bits? Okay, so I'm just removing the backs of the pads. These parts are only fiddly because I've had to take them, I've had to cut them off these bigger ones. Okay. That's it. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of them. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put my horse, make sure there's no strands of glue. I might not mind what I want is my horse to actually lean over the edge as well. So actually he's outside of the picture as well. And then the only thing I have to do then is a nice little sentiment. Okay. So the sentiment, I'm just going to take a piece of this paper, which is the 200 gram. I'm going to cut a strip that is about two centimeters. I think two would be better. Yeah. Two centimeters by eleven. It is cute, Carolyn. It's a very cute card. And then that's all I'm going to do is take some of the sentiments. from the horse one, I'm going to do it good luck. Okay. 
and grow that and to with a good luck. And then in the kit as well there's also a horseshoe. And there's a horseshoe. The horseshoe should be pointing up because otherwise the luck runs out. Horseshoe either side. I'm using this fine clay and then for something and then I'm going to put this on foam pads as well. Okay. So just take one of these again. One, two, three. And then these will go because they've cut it eleven centimeters, it should go in between and land in exactly the same sort of place as that. And then just to finish that off, I'm going to take one of the brown one of the brown pens, I'm just going to colour. So there we have it. Two cards. One made from the piggies. So with the pigs they are a wall. There is a wall in there. Okay. Now the stamps for the wall actually shows it together. Okay. Actually showed together. It shows the top part of the wall and then it's got the four bricks. Okay. But in real life the top part of the wall is one separate stamp and then you've got the four bricks over there which is another stamp okay so you can just do those across the top even in fact that stamp even looks like a, a row of baguettes so you could have the piggies munching down on a row of baguettes as well so So there we are so that's my live for tonight and um, I'd like to thank everybody that came and joined us and watched the video tonight glad you enjoyed these the, um, the two samples will be in the shop tomorrow morning from tomorrow morning and they will be held there this video will can be watched again from YouTube later and also from Facebook again and don't forget if you know any crafters that it would be interested in seeing this then share the live get to watch it and you know share and share like the videos are free so why not so there we are so i hope you all have a good night and i'd like to thank you all for joining us again and supporting valley craft so thanks everyone there we are bye